today we are dealing with a pretty powerful mini PC in the $300 price range. The spotlight is on the Minis Forum UN1250 featuring the speedy 12-core Intel i5 1250p CPU, the improved Iris XE integrated graphics unit, 16GB of DDR4 RAM and a blazing fast 1TB PCIe 4.0 x4 SSD. But that's not all. The device has a few more features up its sleeves that aren't exactly all too common, especially not in the $300 price tier. On Amazon, the UN1250 with the 1TB SSD configuration currently can be had for like $296 US dollars. Some of the features have been implemented exceptionally well, while others a bit lackluster. Therefore, potential buyers of this mini PC might want to stick around because not only will I be covering the offered feature set here, but as always, also conduct tests on performance, power consumption, noise levels, and temperatures, and I'll even touch on gaming performance a little bit. So what you should look out for before purchasing the UN1250, you'll find out in today's video. The scope of delivery is pretty epic. Part of it is the mini PC, the power cord and power supply with a rated output power of 90 watts, an HDMI cable, VESA mounting bracket along with screws, paper documentation, including a warning not to remove the CPU cooler on your own as it appears liquid metal has been used instead of conventional thermal paste. And last but not least, an adapter cable and screws that were unfamiliar to me at first glance. It wasn't until a while later that I dumbass figured it out what it's for after having removed the protective cap. A SATA connection is revealed. More on that in a bit. The UN1250 comes with a rather sleek appearance, actually somewhat resembling an Apple device. I quite like the aesthetics, although I should note that the whole case is made entirely out of plastic. The build quality is decent enough though. The dimensions are 127 by 127 by 54 millimeters. In terms of features, we are dealing with the Intel Core i5 1250p processor equipped with 12 cores and 16 threads. The CPU is based on Alder Lake and was released back in Q1 2022. Honestly, I find these 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM installed here a bit disappointing. I would have liked seeing more, but at least we are running in dual channel. The memory is running at 3200 mega transfers per second under load. Well deserved praise for the Kingston NVMe SSD used here. It's based on PCIe 4.0 x4 and is accordingly fast in terms of read and write speeds. It furthermore makes use of more durable TLC NAND memory, not cheap QLC NAND. Now to open up the mini PC and perform upgrades, you first need to remove the rubber feet on the bottom. Then you loosen four screws. However, actually removing the bottom cover can sometimes be a bit tricky. The joy is all the greater once you manage to get inside though. Here we have easy access to the M.2 SSD, Wi-Fi card, CMOS battery and the RAM. There's no slot for an additional M.2 SSD however. Instead, there's a tiny connector that allows you to use the included adapter cable with the SATA connector. This way a 2.5 inch SATA SSD can be installed to expand one's storage and even screw it in place. And you know how nice I find stuff like that. Now let's talk connectivity or ports. Next to the power button on the front, there's a 3.5mm audio jack and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. On the rear, a USB-C port, which I strongly assume is also 3.2 Gen 2, but it also supports display port and power delivery. Then one HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gigabit LAN based on an Intel controller, one DisplayPort 1.4, and finally two USB 2.0. A Kensington lock as well as a clear CMOS button are also at our disposal. Interestingly, there's even an integrated microphone on the front of the device. It is utterly useless, however, and rather picks up fan noise than one's voice. Integrated microphones are generally considered a bit controversial on mini PCs, though. That's something I noticed, but then again, you could just simply disable the mic. As is often the case, I would also like to point out that there's no SD card reader on board here. On the other hand, Minis Forum does deserve some praise for the many cutouts and good ventilation on this device. 
Apparently Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 are also part of the feature set, not too shabby. As is usually the case, Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed, but this time we get a very outdated version of it pre-installed out of the box, namely 22H2. It's therefore advisable to download updates, which isn't really an issue. After a quick check, it turns out Windows was activated using a OEM license. So far, everything's looking good. It's also reassuring to know that the UN1250 doesn't come with any pre-installed third-party programs also known as bloatware. Not even the Microsoft Edge web browser comes with any extension preloaded. Furthermore, I did not notice any questionable background processes or services running. Nonetheless, a healthy amount of skepticism never hurts, and so I put the whole Windows install, as well as the entire SSD, through a total of three different virus scanners, one of which was performed externally. Windows Defender slash security, Malwarebytes and Norton 360. All results came back clean, no threats were detected. I was particularly pleasantly surprised by the UEFI BIOS. Minisform obviously put some effort into integrating their own user interface with mouse support even, although navigating with the mouse is a bit adventurous to say the least. I believe it's great that all those advanced users are offered options within the BIOS to specifically adjust both the power limits and fan curves so that you can make the mini PC run really quiet if you wanted to. But there's a lot more to dig through in this BIOS. Hats off for that. The i5-1250P CPU inside this mini PC is surprisingly configured quite aggressively, achieving a constant CPU package power value of 48 watts. This is also reflected in the clock speeds. Under full load, after the first initial seconds, the clock speed is roughly 3 GHz on the P cores and 2.4 to 2.5 GHz on the E cores. After 2 minutes, the clock speed remains virtually unchanged. Apparently, they went for quite beefy cooling to ensure such a high power limit can be maintained over time. In the Cinebench 2024 performance test, today's UN1250 mini PC lands third place in my chart. Even the single core performance is impressive. With that amount of performance offered by the i5-1250P processor, you can certainly tackle even more complex, demanding tasks. So if you don't overdo it, light to moderate image and video editing is definitely possible, even rendering if you're patient enough. Therefore, it's pretty much self-explanatory that playing back 4K UHD videos and movies is no problem for today's device. Despite improved integrated Iris XE graphics, the machine is brought to its knees when gaming due to lackluster graphics performance. But it should be noted that this test was carried out with AAA games, but then again, ones from the past few years. Unfortunately, it's not even enough for a smooth, full HD gaming experience. Only once the resolution is lowered, the frame rate improves. Of course, that always depends on the specific games you are trying to run. More lightweight or older titles, on the other hand, are playable with a smooth frame rate, no problem. Now let's take a look at the power consumption, temperatures and noise levels. Compared to a regular, already fairly power efficient desktop PC, such a mini PC draws significantly less power from the wall. But this specific model does consume quite a bit of power too. Then again, it also performs better than entry level models. The temperatures actually are phenomenal, considering the aggressive CPU power limit configuration that needs to be cooled. The max temperature remains below the 80 degrees Celsius mark. But that does come at the expense of noise level, which at max turned out to be 50 decibels in my test. That's not exactly easy to ignore. The built-in cooling solution does a good job though, exhausting a lot of warm air out the mini PC. What bothers me more is the noise level at idle and under light loads. The fan is constantly spinning and at 40 decibels, in theory, not particularly annoying, but in practice I sometimes find the fan's idle frequency range a bit unpleasant. At this point, however, I'd like to point out that we do have the option to tweak the power limit and fan curve ourselves in the UEFI BIOS, but that would come at the expense of the mini PC's performance. Conclusion: Despite the aforementioned shortcomings, the Minis Forum UN1250 generally left me very satisfied and happy especially considering the price point of only $296. 
plenty of modern connectivity is offered, including Intel-based 2.5 gigabit LAN, nothing stands in the way of storage expansion via a 2.5-inch SATA drive either, the built-in NVMe SSD is really fast and relies on TLC rather than cheap QLC NAND memory, the CPU performance is pretty exemplary, and the cooling is very effective. The downsides of this device, in my opinion, include the sometimes high noise levels by the fan at stock settings, and the rather lackluster graphics performance. Additionally, I find it a shame such a small powerhouse of a mini PC comes equipped with only 16GB of RAM. 32GB would have been more appropriate. But of course, I am aware that one shouldn't be expecting too much, because the Minis Forum UN1250 already offers an attractive price to performance ratio to begin with. The mini PC is therefore definitely worth a recommendation if the mentioned shortcomings don't bother you too much. What are your impressions on the UN1250? Is this perhaps one of the best solutions within this price range? Now if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave me a like, or alternatively just hit the dislike button if you prefer. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.